I love wax myrtles. Oh, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Starting off a new week, new things. Just pulled up to the Walgreens. I need to get some Epsom salt for some fertilizing stuff I'm doing and just admiring the shrubs. And these actually, these aren't wax myrtles. These are northern bayberries, which is Myrica pensylvanica, I'm pretty sure. And the wax myrtles, uh, Myrica serifica, serifa, something like that. Either way, pretty shrubs. They're very similar in appearance. The difference, I mean, there are many differences. The southern wax myrtles, not as cold hardy. The northern bayberries, more cold hardy, not super hardy though. Uh, but they make nice looking shrubs as long as they're maintained properly and don't like have too bad of a winter. We had a bad winter, so they were looking a little bit rough. But they look good now. They're cute. Anytime I see anything evergreen that's not like a pine tree, I'm usually all for it. It's just nice to have some variety, you know? And I've been told, oh, loud car out there. I've been told that with the wax myrtle, they're supposed to help repel mosquitoes. Like you can crush up the leaves and rub them on yourselves. I don't know about that. Read about toxicology first. That one's on you. Keep yourself safe, just to be sure. But um, let me know if you know if that's true. I don't know if that's the same thing with the Northern Bayberry. I mean, I've been bitten by plenty of mosquitoes when I've been walking around mine before. So I have no idea. <sighs> Epsom salt. Don't need more sunscreen. Um, where's the, oh, there it is. Why they gotta be, oh, eucalyptus, don't need that. Oh, can I get a little mini flamingo? Oh, that is beautiful. <laughs> $20 beautiful though. I've always thought it'd be fun to test as seen on TV products. There just aren't a ton for gardening, though. It's $20, though, and it's ugly. And no, I can just dump water on my head. Don't need to spend $20 for that. Oh, these are cute, and they're 50% off. Home Depot! The AC is very loud. Yeah, Walgreens was really crowded. I had to, like, whisper everything while I was in there. While I was in there, and, um... I didn't get those little lantern things. I ended up putting my hand on them, like to cover up the things they'd go on. They're like, there's no point. There's nothing to see. Hey, 50% off chubs and trees. I think I said chubs and trees. That didn't, I don't know what that means. Y'all have any skip laurels? That'd be nice. Probably not. I don't normally see those at the big box stores. I also need to remember while I'm here that I need to get some uh, organic potting mix. To do some aquatic planters. Gotta remember to do that. Hopefully they have them. I'm not seeing... Doesn't look like it. Lots of hibiscus. None of which are in bloom, which is kind of odd. Oh, and this is what I was talking about in last week's vlog. The Sonic Bloom Wygella. They're supposed to just bloom a bunch. Be really pretty. This isn't looking too hot, but that's what I was talking about. There's other varieties. Right here, Sonic Bloom Pearl. That's pretty. I like the flowers on there. Are we gonna have another issue of camera not focusing? Cause I'm not into that. I'm due for a new camera here and like, hopefully by the end of the month, mid-August, something like that. Hey, these are nice and big though. I'm gonna make sure when I get a new camera to get one with a flip screen so I can film myself. Cause that's why I'm never on cause I can't do that, and as you guys have seen, the autofocus isn't trustworthy. I filmed entire videos with me in front of the camera, gone to edit them like half of it wasn't in focus. It's very, very frustrating. Where are you? Eh. Okay though, 50 bucks for these weeping cherries, that, that's pretty good. I have been contemplating in place of the Japanese maple in my front yard, putting a weeping cherry, but it needs to be like a super, super, super dwarf variety. Not a standard one because I had one. Still have the stump in my backyard. Yeah, this is gonna get too big. Just a thought, I don't know. Yeah, not seeing much as far as evergreens go. These crepe myrtles are cute. This variety is called Garnet King, which is nice. They need to, I would, it would be nice if when you live further up north, I'm in zone six, if they would stick to the varieties that are a little bit more tried and true in your area, like the Sioux. That's a pretty good one. Um, Tonto, fairly tough. There's a whole bunch, but the hybrids, they haven't been around quite long enough to really know how hardy they are. So these 
are only eight bucks. They're really big. I'm not gonna get any, because I don't need them, but like, check out your Home Depot. Maybe they're on sale. Although this might be a 4th of July thing, and if that's the case, and this is, this, none of it matters. Oh, and I don't see that 50% off sign in front of the tropicals. So, that, <laughs> maybe not the case. Oh, yeah, the sign says excludes roses and hibiscus and some other things. Oh, tiger eyes. This is the first, come on, camera. First editions. That doesn't matter. The variety is called tiger eyes. Six by six, zones four through eight. Lots of sun. They have really cool foliage on them. They get a neat shape to them. Cool plants. Listen. Most obnoxious cart ever. Not to be all like negative and whatnot, but Home Depot, at least where I live, their tropical selection this summer has just sucked. It's been terrible. I like they haven't really got anything other than like hibiscus and some mandevillas. Some desert roses here though. That's kind of cool. Oh, look at the codex on that one. Lots of branches here. I kind of prefer mine ungrafted, but like it's still fun. They're all still really fun. Oh, that's a that's a pretty good deal. Wish it said more about them other than just Desert Rose. Ooh, and that one's all twisty and cool. Should I get one? Mm, nah, I got my Gavin plant. That's enough. Some Hoyas and some Dying Ivy. Cute. Eglinemias. Spathophyllums. Oh, those are nice. Oh, right. Potting soil. Okay, so it appears they've added fertilizer. So I'm thinking, I'm not positive, but this makes it kind of sound like they've added fertilizer into their organic, maybe. Yeah, see it says here fertilizer, so won't be using that. Oh, hold on though. Derived from feather meal, soybean meal, bone meal, and sulfate of potash. That's that's kind of okay. Still, like, not ideal for what I'm doing. What about you? Okay, and this one, also, everything's derived from organic matter, so I guess either one would probably be alright. <laughs> so, I could have gotten 12 quarts, two of these bags for $12, or I could just get 25 quart for Sit. Yeah, that makes more sense. Okay, that's enough. Not much to see here, and oh, this cart's driving me insane. I'm gonna go now. So, I also swung by Lowe's, and um, uh, whoops. I just went in to grab some neem, and uh, the garden department manager's really nice. They had a whole bunch of coli she was getting her clearance at, so she was just like, here we go. So, got a whole bunch of coleus and stuff for like a buck. Some of them were 50 cents. Really great deals. It's like everything was marked down, even the Sago. So, got a lot of stuff here for like $25. Great deals. And now I need to unload these. You know, coleus, when you can find them on clearance and they look decent enough, get them. Because all you gotta do is cut the flowers off, they'll bush back out and look fantastic. I'll talk about more. <laughs> I'll talk about more. I will talk about that more at another time in a different video, probably. I got the Sago because there have been requests for a Sago Palm video. So I was like, you know what? Five bucks, grabbed a little one, and I'll do that. And then I'll give it away to someone, to a friend, or something like that. And this is because they, I have, well, you don't need to know. That's for something else. Don't worry about it. And it's hot, so I need to go ahead and get this stuff out of the cart. The totem's still in there, so need to do something with that. All the coleus are unloaded now. What a great deal. They're looking fantastic. Like I said, the spent flowers, and just pop them right off. Really, it's best to go ahead and cut them, but I'm here right now without my pruners, so that's better than nothing to at least get those off of there. That'll encourage them to keep staying bushy. Don't let them flower. You'll keep having a nice full plant. They tend to get leggy when they go into flower. And then some of them have some leaves that are somewhat undesirable, maybe even some rotten ones potentially down inside. I'm not seeing any, but if there are or were, I would snap those off. Right now they're fine, so I'm not gonna be able to plant these right now. 
because the area I want to put them in isn't ready to go yet. Yeah, see here how they're just kind of starting to put out those flowers? Even this one, it's teeny, teeny, tiny, but I can still get in there and pinch that off and pull it off of there. And coleus is so great. Look at how easily coleus roots. This is a great example. When I was at Lowe's, the garden department manager, her name's Kat, she was good at helping me pick out some. She told me that she had some that were producing roots for, you know, seemingly no reason. And I thought I'd go ahead and grab a couple of those, really honestly, just so I could show you how fantastic and easy they are to root. I have coleus sometimes where just parts of the plant, like say something like this, this little stem here, if that were to fall back into the soil and just hang out there, then an entire coleus plant will grow. I don't have to do anything to it as long as that area stays somewhat moist. It's good. So they're very, very, very easy to propagate as far as getting these stem pieces rooted. So simple. But yeah, like I was saying before, with cleaning out undesirable foliage, that just helps reduce pests and chances of rot and anything like that. These should be good for now, for a little while. And I'll get back to them later at another time. Well, these guys, they have a lot of flowers on them. Thought I got them all off, but apparently not. And, uh, you know, with coleus, there are varieties that can go full shade, full sun, a lot of varieties that can go anywhere in between, all of the above. It's going to influence the intensity of the colors on the foliage, but with the Kong coleus, which is what this is right here, these are the Kongs, the big guys with the big leaves, I've noticed they do better with more sun than shade. They just look nicer, you get a more sturdy plant. So something like four to five hours morning sun and then dappled light throughout the rest of the day, they do great with that. In five hours, you know, that's part sun, so they should be good with that. And I'll make sure to put them someplace where they're going to get a nice amount of morning sun. It'll be, like I said, filtered throughout the rest of the day. I think they will enjoy that. Just having a drift of colorful foliage, it's going to be beautiful. And for like 15 bucks, not even. How many plants are here? So, nine of them at a dollar, one of them at two dollars. Yeah, like fifteen dollars. And this is going to fill out a very big space. Cannot wait to get these planted up. It's going to be so pretty. Need to not be buying plants though, which is going to be tricky because 4th of July sales are happening and my favorite nursery with all the tropicals, they are marking things down every day up until the 4th and on the 4th, they'll be like 50% off. Ugh. I'm going to do my best. I'm probably going to get something, but I shouldn't, but I'm probably going to do it anyways, right? Oh, look who's finally up and eating. Hey, Colby. Good morning, bud. How you doing? Really into the lettuce. I already had some pellet out, which Colby ate, which is good, because I mentioned before, Colby's a picky eater. With tortoises, when you get a picky eater, I, I try and, like, blend food in with the lettuce to kind of get them to acquire a taste for the new foods. That hasn't worked great with Colby. It tends to just kind of eat the, around that stuff, but... Um, I'm getting him to eat pellets. I don't know. Colby's a girl, by the way. I just have been in the habit of calling Colby a boy for all these years. It doesn't really matter. But, I mean, it does if you have more than one. Anyways, Colby's good. Eating some food. Then the last update, I guess, is pumpkin. Not last update. The dogs and everything, they're doing well. But, you know, pumpkin, she had her boo-boo last weekend. She's doing really well, though. Right, but Yeah, you're fine. You're tough. You're a trooper. Such a good girl. So sweet and full of love. Was that enough? That was enough petting? Okay, I'm sorry. I'll leave you alone now. And go back to napping. And it's hot out, so dogs, nowhere to be seen. They're sleeping. They don't, it's too hot for them. Oh, so pretty. My favorite hibiscus. I really wish this had had a label on it. I've noticed when it comes to hibiscus, it's not just the flowers. I've noticed with hibiscus, I'm really into it. stiff, crisp, dark, glossy foliage. They end up usually just being a more nice, tidy-looking plant. And that's what's going on here. That was something I really liked about this hibiscus when I was down in Florida that I think was called Aloha Orange Punch, something like that. I can't remember Hawaiian Orange Punch. I don't remember. It was in that vlog, though, and the characteristic that really drew me to them wasn't just the flowers, it was their foliage. And that makes a big difference in the plant. It adds a nice contrast when the flowers are on the plant, too. And, um... What was I going to say? I think it made the orange stand out a lot on those Hawaiian punch ones, whatever they were called. 
that's sort of the same thing here. And it makes the plant look nice even when it's not in flower because you have that glossy foliage, which I really like. The foliage does, it's typically glossy on our standard Rosa sinensis. This is a seminal pink, really common hibiscus. But you can see the foliage is just different. It doesn't have the same appeal to it. Still pretty, but not the same. And with hibiscus needing that rest period between flowering, you know, they'll flower, put out a bunch of buds, set flower, and then they need to rest for a little while. During that rest period that usually lasts for a few weeks, it's nice to look at, well, prettier foliage. I'd rather look at these leaves than the others. Know what I'm saying? Mr. Freckles is growing really... This isn't a garden tour. What am I doing? Stop. Constantly trying to remind myself when I'm doing these vlogs to not go too overboard showing updates with the plants because then the garden tours are kind of a waste of time, right? So here's the project now. I have all of these blue pots that are somewhat round. Got them years ago, super cheap clearance, had them over the patio, loved them, and then realized that they have some major flaws. The main flaw being in these ones right here where the top is smaller than the middle. So if you put anything in there that is going to root out heavily, it is a nightmare to get it back out because the root mass in the middle of the pot is so much bigger than the top. So I haven't really been using these pots. They've been kind of stacked up over here. I had like an overflow of pottery. Like this is all going to the recycling right here. They're all broken, cracked, chipped plastic pots that I've gotten on clearance over the years. I don't need them, no reason to hold on to them. What I'm thinking I'm going to do with these guys, I don't want to get rid of them because they're nice pots, even though I don't really plant them up very often anymore. What I'm going to do is get this area cleaned up. This used to be all beautiful gravel, but this is also where everything drains off the patio. So over the years, dirt, soil, leaves decomposing, things have built up underneath the gravel and lifted the entire area up. So I've been working on digging that out. I'm going to like retrench it and try and flush as much of that out so it'll go down. There's a sewer back there, a storm sewer, and get that cleaned up. Right here, along the edge of the hot tub, that's where I'm going to line up these pots. Now I have too many. I'm only going to be able to fit about three of them there. So I may end up bringing them forward and like stacking them, maybe? I'm not really sure. First thing I have to do though is get in, clean things up, level it out, and do some stuff with that. And then I'm going to plant like peppers and things like that over here. Okay, it's been a while. The sun came out, it got really hot outside. Oh, remember <laughs> this planter? Yeah, lettuce bolted. Need to do something with that. This is not what I had in mind, but I don't hate it. As always, I'm over here doing my thing where I'm overthinking things. I have been digging out a trench to go down, getting harder and harder the further down I go because there's just there's so many roots. There's drip lines in the way, and I can't reroute it right now because there's not enough slack. So uh, I don't. I'll worry about that another time. Main thing is the layout of the pots. Now I had originally thought I would do around one, one of these three right here, that I would put one on top of each one of those and have a gap to plant it in the front. And then this just like randomly happened because I tossed that one up there to get it out of the way. And I don't hate it. There have been some issues getting things level. This is a hill right here. Everything drains down. So in order to properly level something like this, I would really need to put down a base of like two by fours into a rectangle get that filled up with gravel. So I, 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 I don't want to do that. That's not happening right now. This is, this is really hard to dig through right here. So I don't know. This is not practical. So that's kind of the number one issue, which I think is what I need to go off of because this is up so high. I'm going to be doing like veggies and random things in these pots and that means that every single spring I'm going to need to dump them and replace at least 50% of the soil, ideally all of it, because, you know, veggies, they're nutrient hogs. They take up lots of nutrient. They're going to need fresh soil. This pot up here, that's going to be really, really heavy to pull this thing down every single spring because I only have it filled up like a quarter of the way as it is, and it was heavy getting it up there. I don't know if I feel like dealing with that. It's a lot easier when they're more down here, kind of towards like hip level, where I can get in and pull them from there. Oh, it is so hot. It's like 94 degrees. I'm thinking, let me see if I can show you the other way. It's kind of hard to show the other way right now because without the bottom pots being full of soil, they're not going to sit, hold on. They don't want to stand up without the pots, the bottom level being full of soil, which I don't 
I'm not gonna lie, I don't hate this. I would obviously want that one down there to be the same as those. Not practical for veggies that need a cage around them, so while that looks kind of cool, like I could even have like the ones on the sides up a little bit more and the one in the front, it looks neat. Not practical for things that might need a cage wrapped around them, and then I can't plant anything in the ones down there. So ideally, all three of them would be set up like this one right here. That way I'll have planting space in the front of the pot, up top, that would make more sense. And you see the problem here is that without soil and the, well, why did you do that? I'm trying to show people what I'm talking about here. Okay, that one's kind of staying up now. Yeah, and these have faded over the years. They don't really fully match. And that's kind of why I sort of want them over here where I can still do something with them. It'll still look neat, right? Yeah, I think that that would look better. And this was, <laughs> I had them fairly level. I'll have to make adjustments as I go here. But um, that one down there, I've had a hard time lifting that up high enough to level out with everything because that's the furthest one down. And I pile it up, it slips down, pile it up, it slips down. And uh, there is, there's going to continue to be erosion too. You know, that's just kind of the way it is. Unless, like I said, I build a frame underground and fill that with gravel, that's probably not going to change. So uh, I should probably become content with wanting each one of them to be level so that it looks nice. But if this one down here is a little bit lower than this one and this one's a little bit lower than that one, that's okay, as long as they're level, I'm fine with it. I also have these super cheap arbors right here that I've had for years. I decided to throw them over here. I left the old vine on this one just so it's like you can kind of get a taste of what it looks like and now I'm saying that it looks terrible, so that was sort of a waste of time. I don't know. I was gonna like do a like, let me know what you guys think, but I don't really have time to wait a week to do this. I need to do it now. So I think I'm going to go with this, lift that one up. I think that's good, I think that works. I just don't want it to look junky, and that is what will happen if these don't stay level. So that's why I've been spending a lot of time moving gravel and stuff up around there to lift that up. I'm out of potting soil. <laughs> I've been going through, like, using every single scrap of potting mix I have and blending it together. Still short, which is unfortunate because the potting soil I had was so I could repot my areca palms, and I really just, I don't, you know, feel like running errands anymore. So I went in with my bulb auger here, blending them all together, and uh, added a hefty amount of perlite because that expert potting mix doesn't really drain to my liking, or I don't know if it drains fairly well. Holds on to moisture for a long time. A little bit longer than I would like it to. So there's a lot of perlite and everything, and I really mixed it together as much as I could to get it combined. And having that blend in the top pot's not that big of a deal. It'll dry out more quickly than being elevated like that. So it's fine. The peppers, man. Snails have really done a lot of damage to these guys. I've been spraying using DE powder, all kinds of things, and uh, nothing seems to be working. The Bonide Slug and Snail Bait, which is fantastic. It's a great product. I can't find it. Nobody has it. It's sold out absolutely everywhere, so I ordered some off the internet, but it's not going to be here for like another week or two. That does work really well, though, and that should help with the problem a lot. The issue with the DE powder is it just it won't stop raining. It, I thought it was going to be better because the forecast keeps being like, oh, a week of no rain, and then it changes the next day. It's like, oh, no, no, it's going to rain every single day. And uh, when that happens, <laughs> getting some hibiscus treats, Colby. Colby also very much enjoys hibiscus and cactus. Hey, Tuck. Hey, Tuck. Yeah, things cooled off a little bit, so I let them out. I also don't let them out when the lettuce is on the ground because they're sneaky and they eat Colby's food. What was I saying? The rain, snails, all this stuff. It's just been a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and pot up what I have the soil for because they just, they need to get out of their nursery cans. That's really important. Their growth is stunted. I have these scotch bonnet peppers up here that just, they're looking horrible. So I need to get them potted up and trimmed and all that fun stuff. Also, this is a lot of combination of peppers in a tight space. So that could be problematic, but I think it'll be fine. And then I'm planting these up just slightly higher than the soil surface around them. That's to combat, combat, to combat any issues with moisture, things being too moist. Like I mentioned, that expert mix holds on to moisture for a long time. I don't want these to rot, so having them raised up just a little bit helps a ton with that. I've gone through, got a cage on these. I don't have enough soil, unfortunately, to plant the rest of these up. I don't think I do anyways. I'll rummage around a little bit more, but I think I'm out. 
I'm gonna work in a little bit of Estoma, Estoma, Espoma Biotone Starter into this also. And I'm going to give these Scotch Bonnets, because see how they've stretched out here, gotten really leggy. They don't look good, but I can see that they have some growth that wants to come out down here. So I'm going to give that a little bit longer, probably several days, let that open up. Then I'm gonna cut these in half and get them to fill back out from down below. And I may end up doing the same thing with the other ones. There's a Trinidad Scorpion, Carolina Reaper, and a, a Habanero. Lots of spicy things. And then the bell peppers that I got by accident when I was shopping for the Amazel Basil. So I'm gonna, way too many peppers, but it's fine. I like peppers. Found more soil. Got that taken care of. Still a little bit short, but it's all right. Blended them together. I uh, top dressed with some Osmo Coat and the um, Espoma Biotone Starter. And then I remembered this over here. Issue. A few vlogs ago when I picked up the Amazel Basil, I also, like, I don't remember getting it. I guess I just got really happy with the plants because the same thing would happen with the peppers. I was also rushing, and sometimes when I'm vlogging, I get distracted. Anyways, I have a tomato. I need to plant that. So the options here are I can double up on peppers. I can put two peppers in here, two bell peppers. It's not necessary. They get really big. So what I may end up doing is just pulling that pepper out, putting a tomato in there, the tomato, and then the amazel basils in the front of some of these, and um, I have strawberries too. So I'm gonna get that all filled out, hopefully. It's starting to thunder, so I need to get moving. Hey, <laughs> done, doesn't it look pretty? Yeah, everything needs to shape up and get moving. The amazel basil, one of the nice things about them is you're not supposed to have to cut the flowers off to keep them vigorous. However, since I just potted these guys up, I want to go ahead and take those flowers off so that they can devote their energy into rooting out and growing and not flowering. So I'm doing the amazel basils in here with the tomato. Those generally pair well together. I'm going to let this perk up a little bit more before I start pruning. I am going to come in and take off some of the lower growth to get it going on up, which means I may pull the cage out and just put a stake in it and let it go up like a tower. I haven't decided about that for sure yet. And uh, I didn't have enough soil to get this one potted up, so the jalapeno is still hanging out over here, just doing its thing. And then I combine the two scotch bonnets over here together. Because the thing with this, you know, I don't actually feel like waiting to prune these back. I'm going to do it now. Because I'm concerned that I'm going to forget to do it if I wait. So they'll be fine. It's all right. They've got some little peppers on them. I uh, don't think they look that great, but maybe I'll throw them into something tonight. Besides the point, this is just to kind of get things going. These are planted kind of close together, but it's just it's going to have to work. It'll be fine. The snails, all that snail damage, having these guys raised up with better airflow and out from my sprinkler system. These were all together in the same area in a part some location where my sprinklers were hitting them. Because if you remember, I had that vacation not too long ago and I needed to get them someplace where they would be watered because I was gone for a pretty long time. And I didn't want the people watching the house to have to water the plants like a ton. So they were in a very moist area and hence snails. I've never had snail issues like this. You'll notice the basil, fine. Basil, great for repelling pests. As far, I mean, you have to keep them planted kind of close together to the plant you want to repel the pests from, but these were in the same spot as the peppers. So see that foliage? Snails loved it. That foliage, not so much. So like, it wouldn't hurt to have that planted all the way through. Companion planting can be a bit mind-boggling, like strawberries. It's really not a great idea to have strawberries too close to tomatoes. They're both very prone to verticillum rot, so having them close together just increases the risk of that being an issue. These are kind of close together. This is another reason that I made sure to pot them up, pot all of pretty much everything I've potted up just a smidge higher than the soil surface. Now with the strawberries, that doesn't matter as much because they're going to spread out and just kind of go down, crawl down the surface, but I think it will be okay. I'm not too terribly concerned. I haven't had many issues with verticillum rot in the past, but we will see. If it looks like it's going to be an issue, then I'll pull them out because they are kind of close to the tomato, but I bought the tomato by accident and I actually want to grow the strawberries, so... That, that, I'll, I'll, I don't know. I have to think about that one. Because it is risky, kind of having them in here with things. Strawberries also attract a lot of wildlife, which will dig in and eat up the flowers and seed heads off the other plants. 
and having all the different varieties of peppers together. Now that's really only going to be a problem if someone wants to save the seed. So if in the fall time, or I mean, when temperature starts to drop really below 55, when you get the last harvest off of them, if you're saving the seeds for next year, then that could be an issue because of cross pollination. But it really shouldn't impact the flavor of the crop on these plants this year. I am going to go ahead and spread some slug and snail bait around here. It's the ortho and it just, I've been using it and I mean, look at how well it's working. I don't know. The bonite stuff works great. Like I said before, I just haven't been able to find it, but I want to get that in here. I did also add tomato fertilizer into here that get that extra boost of calcium. And I put just a sprinkle of it on all of them. Cause just the more calcium, the better really. And yeah, <laughs> in time this will fill out and look great i didn't have enough strawberries to do one on each side of each plant but they'll spread so it's okay not a big deal strawberries are not something i want to go out and spend a ton of money on it just doesn't make sense because they're so vigorous they grow so much they're a little wilty right now because i just hit them with the hose they've just been watered but um they'll bounce up and do their thing chives i do have some chives i might throw into the mix here at some point i don't really know we will see. Chives also companion plant well with things like peppers and tomatoes and whatnot. But anyways, my main objective was to get them out of their tiny little nursery cans and into soil because it's July by the time this video comes out. It's just, it's too hot to be growing these things and keeping them in those teeny tiny little nursery pots. Not going to work. And you can see, you know, they stretch out, they get leggy, like what happens with those scotch bonnet peppers. And that's, that's just not great. So this way they have more access to moisture and all that good stuff. The trellises in the back, I thought about maybe putting beans on them, but I don't think I'm going to because I actually, those are kind of like a privacy thing for the hot tub. So I will more than likely actually throw a vine on those that makes more sense to have there. That looks, let's get that out of the shot. Get out of here. Something that um, maybe will potentially be evergreen or just more perennial, but I don't know if that really makes sense since I'm going to have to pull the swell from it's a work in progress. It's fun. It's a whole new gardening area. And now I can take this whole thing apart. It was fun. It did okay. I'm going to keep this together. Just clean it up. I'm going to get the lettuce out because that's useless. There's no reason for that to be in there. But the um, creeping thyme, I want that in there. I like thyme a lot. So I'm going to clean those things up. There's just, you know, lots of stuff to do. And I'm having fun doing it. It is about to start storming though at pretty much any second now. So I'm going to call it quits for right now and pick back up later and who knows what I'll be doing. We'll just see what I feel like. Okay, I thought I vlogged and said what I was doing, where I was going, but I just looked and I didn't. It's probably pretty obvious right now. I'm picking up some potting soil so I can finish up with other projects, but there was something I meant to say and I don't know what was it. <sighs> Turn the AC down, that was probably kind of noisy. Um, oh, okay, so just a moment ago I was talking about intercropping, and I got online to find a chart to show you guys and share with everybody about intercropping, and I saw, um, ooh, MI Gardener just put out a video not too long ago about intercropping, so I'm like, that is fantastic. Go watch his video! I'm sure he's gonna say and do everything way better than I would anyways, because I don't do a ton of vegetable gardening, but I do a little. Like, I'm not new to it or anything, but he's it's, it's a good video. Watch that one. Ever get super excited about getting a fantastic parking spot and then realize that there's no cart return anywhere near your car, so it doesn't even matter? Oh, foxglove. Love digitalis. Haven't planted it because I was always worried about the toxicity, but my dogs don't ever fuss with plants, so I've kind of gotten over that. It was more last year when I started with the castor beans. I was like, oh, this is a slippery slippery slope. Oh my goodness, this yarrow is gorgeous. A song siren, Angie. Beautiful. Oh, that's gorgeous. I love that. Wow, these hollyhocks are beautiful too. What is their name? They almost look like Dianthus hollyhocks. Fiesta time. Oh, that's a cute name. I like that. Look at these. Summer spice amaretto. That is beautiful. I love that so much. Yeah, I don't remember why I needed another one of these, but I remember that I remembered that I needed another one, so I'll grab one. <sighs> Crap, did I need two? I'll just get one. Lord knows, it's not like I'm gonna be back to Lowe's again, right? I get my soil, get out of here. Okay, I'm home and um, real quick, working on my thumbnail for the Sago Palm video. I didn't, I didn't even realize what I just did. Yeah, that's not going to work. 
that's not really much better. Just go ahead and keep on undoing. Just leave it like that. That's fine. That was. I'm really glad I noticed that because I was thinking like it would be cute since in the hold on, the Mogart in the video has this label in it. You know, like that. I was gonna try and mimic that, and then it just. I didn't. It was an accident. I'm really glad I noticed it though. That would have been really embarrassing. And what makes it even worse is I was like, oh, well, maybe if I put a smaller one on this and that'll make it better. Made it so much worse. So much worse. Tried to make it bigger. It's just, it's neither here nor there, but funny. Um, is it going to rain? I hear the thunder, but I still see sun. What's going on? Also, Sandy just commented on, oh, I don't need my sunglasses on the camera anymore. Just commented on a video about the pothos and reminded me that's why I needed to buy two of those pots because I'm doing one for each pothos and I need one for the, so I should have gotten two but it's it's all right for now because I only have one of those poles so no big deal like, like I said I'll be back okay the time has come it's actually overdue need to repot the areca palms I was waiting a while because I was letting the systemics and things kind of do their thing I don't want to do too much with these at one time the systemics and sprays have not really been working all that well. I'll see if I can get in here and show you, but, well, that was full of mealybugs. I squished them, so there's all their little mealybug corpses, which I don't feel great about, but you can see the problem's still there. It's going to take repetition and time. Thing is, I'm just kind of over it. I love my Eureka Palms. I don't want to get rid of them by any means. But I'm just tired of dealing with the mealybugs in the winter time, and these seem to be the culprit. However, it is entirely possible. Is the fan too loud? Do I need to turn off fan chair? Is that bothering anyone? It's so hot. What I was getting at. I've always blamed these for being the magnets for the mealybugs every year, but it's possible that maybe the mealybugs are just a thing and they prefer the Eureka palms. So kind of like a deterrent plant really it's just it was so bad last winter it's never been that bad before hence why they look like garbage right now so I don't know I don't want to get rid of them but I'm just sick of dealing with the issues one of the local nurseries here oh it's fourth of July happy well it's not the fourth anymore by the time you've seen this but anyways one of the local nurseries has a big annual and tropical sale so I ran down there tried to vlog while I was there but it was just too hot the camera kept overheating so I didn't really vlog while I was there. But I picked up a couple of nice looking Adenidia palms for really cheap. I was thinking about maybe swapping those out and putting those in these pots and then moving the Eureka palms into pots that are more lightweight and easier to manage in the winter time so that if the mealybugs become an issue again this winter, which they probably will, I can move them outside on a mild day and give them a nice spray because I don't like to use chemicals very much in my indoor growing area. And I use, I start with something mild first. I start with like neem oil, peppermint oil, all the, lots of safe products before I resort to the harder chemicals because even the harder chemicals aren't really working. So why jump to that first, right? Hopefully that made sense. So I'm just kind of, I've been sitting here trying to figure out what to do. It's driving me crazy. Also, those fronds on that Australian fern, those are driving me crazy too. I mentioned last week this had storm damage on it and said I needed to get around to coming out here and cutting that stuff off. And I just, it's one of those things I just keep forgetting to do. Camera, behave. I'll get in there and make a closer cut in a little bit, but I need to get that dead stuff off of there for the time being anything that has green on it I'll leave and uh, I think I'm gonna make a cut right there okay so I could cut some green off but you can see it's still got lots of good stuff it's just it's opened up one two three new fronds and there's another one on the way so it's, it's growing really really well I just gotta get it cleaned up I hesitate cleaning these guys up I usually wait a little bit for all the little furry bits to come off because they irritate the skin they make me very itchy I don't enjoy it. Not that that's something anybody would enjoy. Okay, as I was saying, easily distracted. Trying to figure out what to do here. Like I said, no matter what, they need to be repotted. They've been in these pots for too long, they need fresh soil. I don't know, I'm gonna think on it for a minute. I've already got the tarp laid out and everything, so 
I can get that done. I figured I should like handle everything that's gonna be messy over here right now, since I have stuff to clean up from all the vegetable garden stuff. And it's time anyways, so I'm gonna think about it. See, I, <laughs> I keep like bouncing off like I'm done. I'm not. I think Adenidia palms would be beautiful. These pots, one goes on each side of the hot tub. I have them grouped together right now because it's easier to keep them watered and sprayed and everything when they're together. Those Adenidia palms would be beautiful on each side of the hot tub. The Adenidias, though, they're just not as easy to keep in the winter time. They like a lot of warmth. The Eurekas do too, but I mean, they go through every winter just fine. I know they don't look great right now, but that's because. If you've been watching the vlogs, you know, I don't feel like going through the whole thing. They've been sprayed a lot, and I kind of was just like, I'm going to let the sun cook a lot of the mealybugs off, so that did its toll on the foliage and everything. They'll flush out its new growth. It'll be okay. So I think that in ideas would be pretty. They're gorgeous plants. Mm, I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud here. Sorry. Also, the last thing is that these areca palms are getting very big. They're really tall, and they're almost, they have almost outgrown the grow space as far as height is concerned. So moving them into wider, I'd probably put them into like nursery pots, probably bump them up into something shallow but wide just for like a couple of years. Yeah, that's not really going to work space-wise though. Hmm. Oh, so but the point there with the Adenidias and them, they uh, don't really, like usually for like two to three years, I'm good with them in the growth space. And after that, not as great. And I think that that has a lot to do with repotting. So uh in the future with Adenidias, I'll make sure to repot them probably every single spring instead of every other year like I was doing before. I think it was just too hard to keep them hydrated. The ones I lost last year is from that horrible, like really bad freeze we had in October that like wiped out a lot of the nursery's stock and everything. But the other ones I've had, that's usually been the issue. And if I put Adenidias in these pots right here, I don't want to have to pull them and repot them every year. I like basically pull them out, freshen the soil, trim out dead roots if there are any, and plop them back in. Though I should probably have been doing that with the Eurekas the entire time, but that's irrelevant because I wasn't. These have been in these pots for way, way too long. They need fresh soil very badly. It's been like, I don't know. You know what, I'm not even gonna tell you. It's been, it's been too long. But it's only the very beginning of July, so I figure if I stay on top of the systemics and the sprays, the systemic I'm using needs to be repeated monthly, I believe. I have it like on a calendar, so it reminds me when to do it. And then the sprays I'm doing every two weeks, because you have to keep up with the life cycle of the mealybug. So if I stay on top of that, that should make a really big difference. And then when I move the plants in this year, if I switch, or make, or not switch, if I make sure that I get the lace wings, and like as soon as I bring the plants in so those populations can stay higher because it was just by the time I brought the lace wings in this past winter it was too late there were way too many mealybugs they weren't it just was not enough there's still a bunch out though I just got bit by a soldier beetle yesterday it got me right on the legs it was nice so they're still out and doing their thing but it's just uh maybe if I start at the beginning instead of waiting till a problem starts I need to be preventative which is just the responsible thing to do anyway so that's something to remember here maybe what I'll do mm, never mind okay I was expecting this root mass to just be a complete and total mess it's actually pretty healthy the soil you can see here has gotten really fine which is good for them but it's also it's breaking down a lot that what happens that's why you need to repot even though i didn't with this plant uh at least every two years so that the soil doesn't compact and turn to mud and hold on to too much moisture but like these roots are not so bad at all it's looking pretty good um i who knows what's going on in the center though i need to break this up break it down i was expecting ants and things to just come flying out of here because you know the ants and the mealybugs kind of go hand in hand together but no that didn't happen at all. I mean, I've been using the ant bait stuff, the little traps that they go into on both of these, so I think that that may have helped. What I think I'm going to do, though, real quick, is pop this pot up and drop one of the adenidias in it and just see how I like it. Oh, and before I do that, though, when I had talked about repotting these areca palms in the springtime, I mentioned that I would end up sterilizing the insides of these pots if they were full of mealybugs, because the mealies will go down into the root zone, too. Sometimes I've had plants in the past or helped people with plants in the past where they had a mealybug problem and then you repot the plant and like the corners and things will just be full of them. But I'm not seeing any of that. I'm still going to give it a rinse um, 
just like soap and water. I'm not going to use anything too harsh or abrasive because it's, you know, it's not glazed on the inside. So it's going to absorb any chemicals and whatnot. If I had a few days, then I would use a mild bleach solution and let the sun do a lot of work, but I don't. It's too hot. I can't leave these unpotted. So that's what's going on with that. All right, just let's pretend that that fits in there. That's really pretty. I like that a lot. I don't know. I do know this lettuce, though. What's going on here? Had my clippers out. Should have taken care of that earlier. Just giving those a snip and get those out. It's also something that... There's just always things, you know? It's part of the fun of gardening. Well, I do really like that. It's tall, but works. I would probably plant some um, vinca, trailing vinca over the front, and then fill in with lots of other fun, pretty things. Because I'm used to the fullness of these uh, areca palms. It's another thing I like about them is they add just a touch of privacy. I don't know. I actually... I think I prefer the Eureka Palms in these. Yep. I'm just gonna go with my gut here. I do love this. I think it looks cool, but nah. Also, maybe it's just I don't like change. That's part of it. Change is a good thing, but like, I'm not feeling it right now because I'm just, I'm so used to these. I've had these Eureka Palms for a very long time. And then here's the other thing. If I go this route and decide to stick with the Adenidia Palm in here, which height-wise, this is going to be just as tall by the time it's time to move these inside as the Eureka Palms are. So they're not going to be able to stay in those pots for more than a year anyway, so they'll get moved out next year. But what am I going to put these in? I also just remembered need to kind of try and cover that root mass up a little bit. The sun will cook that and a lot of the good stuff will come out. Now I do have two of these pots. I'll need to get two more because I remembered, like I just said before a little bit earlier, that those are for the pothos poles. That would work, but the bottoms of them, see these are just gonna, with those areca palms in there, the slightest breeze is gonna blow those right over. That's my chatty Kathy hibiscus. Look at how sad she is. It's because the from the big palm tree when it fell on top of her. So sad. Neither here nor there though. So that would work. It's a rather small pot for them, but I mean it'll do. Eh, no, actually that's, that's too small. Oh, it would look really cute though. I like those, the lime green with the, that's pretty, but no, nah, I don't think that, I'm going to be giving this a root prune, no matter what, but I don't know about that much of a root prune, although this is wider than the other one, so what, what do I do? You know what, though? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The only issue I've had with these areca palms has been the mealy bugs, and the pots have absolutely nothing to do with that, so I'm going to stick with what I know works, and... I think I mentioned, I don't know, I've been talking a lot here, that the Adenidias, they're not as great with the cold snap. Sometimes we have very random cold snaps and have to move them inside unexpectedly. These pots are going to be more difficult to just throw back in the house if there's a random cold snap in October. Because sometimes, like, October can be pretty mild, but there'll be, like, one or two days where it gets ridiculously cold. It's kind of a new thing over the last few years. I'm not enjoying it very much. But with the Adenidias, I can just throw them inside, no big deal lightweight pot. I like these pots. I'm not crazy about them, but for the size and the price, I like them a lot when you factor in those things. And I think that that looks pretty good in there. This is all getting fixed up. I like, I wanted to make my mess and then clean up. So I'm thinking the Adenidius, and look, that's just a better fit, right? I think so. I think that's a much better fit in that pot. So that's what I'm going to stick with for now. And then, uh, you know, do the, I'm going to do the thing. I had planned on putting some packing peanuts, I have this in here so I could raise that added nitty up so we could see what it looked like. I had planned on putting packing peanuts in the bottom of this for drainage. I don't normally like worry about having something on the bottom for drainage, but that is one teeny, teeny, teeny tiny little bitty drainage hole. So I like to have something there. I could, since the pots are empty, drill that hole out bigger, but these pots are kind of old. They've been through a lot. You can see where they've started to warp a little bit. and. I don't know. It's a little bit risky. I can't replace these. I haven't seen these for sale in, uh, who, what, what, what year is it? Well, I got them in 2007. <laughs> so that tells you how old these are. And like I said, I haven't seen them for sale since. Never. So 12 years, uh, I can't replace them if something happens to them. So I'm very careful with them. I originally had three and one of them broke. It had a very old spindle palm in it and it just 
popped the pot because it was so big. So, hmm. All right, let's do this. Although, what about the drainage? I need to figure that out. And my next size, like the biggest bit I have for drilling ceramics, the diamond bit, is only an inch, which isn't gonna be that much bigger than that. So, uh, but gravel? Okay, don't have gravel. Yeah, don't have, do I have rubber mulch? No rubber mulch. Hey Colby, how you doing bud? You know, I thought I was so prepared for this and turns out, nope, not at all. So down in my basement, I have like some things for wrapping things up and saving them. And I thought maybe I might have some packing peanuts in this box that says bubble wrap, but nope. Holiday pillows. Because see, this is where all the Christmas stuff is. Yes, there's a lot. And this is, this is like nothing. This is just a few things. But with the Christmas stuff, I used to have like boxes that I had those... I thought I had packing peanuts in. Well, I don't see them, and everything over there is like old fish tank stuff, so that's not going to be any use right now. Old fish tank stuff and like a lot of old fish tanks. What am I still thinking? This thing, sidetracking, because, you know, that's what I do here. This is really old. This is from, uh, I mean, I don't know, early 90s. It used to have a plastic dome that went over the top. You put this in your fish tank and poured gravel in here, that would weight this down and then there's a valve on the side you hook an air pump to and what it did well you also fill these with gravel also these spots right here and with that dome over it and the air flowing in is it made a little airspace inside the fish tank so the fish could swim around and this was back when uh the pet stores were selling like fiddler crabs and newts and things like that and they could go up in these little spots and have their space to run run around very small not appropriate, we know that now, and uh, but the dome's gone. I don't want to get rid of it though, because I don't know why I don't want to get I have always thought it would be cool to figure out maybe the dome will turn up someday that goes over this and do a fish tank and like fill in with plants in here, teeny tiny little plant. Again, sidetracking. Yep, giving up there. Was this fun for you guys? Are you enjoying just me walking around trying to figure out how I'm going to get this planter done? I mean, it's a vlog, so that's kind of just the way it goes. Yeah, gravel it is. I'll just use gravel. I was just avoiding it because it makes them so much heavier. Hi, Punkyan. Hey, sweetie. Why is everything so grainy? Wow, it is amazing. Just the teeny tiniest little bitty clouds move over the sun, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, feels like it drops like 50. I know I said just a moment ago that I didn't have gravel, but I do have gravel over here in my drainage area that I can steal. So um, that's what I'm going to do. I don't, n that's probably really loud, I'm sorry. I don't need very much. The bottoms of those pots, very small. So I'm just gonna take a little. That'll do, don't need very much like I just said. It's just fine, it's fine, it's no big deal. Yeah, see, just a little bit, it's fine. Okay, that's still moist, so that's good. I'm gonna get in here, I'm gonna start loosening things up as much as I can and uh, work out the roots and get it repotted it's nothing crazy just a simple like basically just gonna drop it back in and put fresh soil in there with it well that's finally done i went back and forth with what to put around them i wanted to maintain the purple orange pink thing, so there is a Persian shield in the back over here. Right here, Persian shield, a compact hot coral orange sun patient, and then I put this Vinca over the front, which doesn't have a name. It's just out of a hanging basket. I divided it. Not the most ideal time of year to do something like that, so I'm gonna have to make sure that my drip emitter's right around this area here, so that stays wet and takes root. Not too wet, because it'll rot. It's kind of complicated but I think that'll be fine there. I've done the dividing up the Vinca thing before and it worked out fine, but it was a little bit earlier in the season and temperatures weren't quite as extreme. Now, the issue I have here with these two palms is that I cannot do the same design in each one because this one goes down there over underneath this big maple tree. It's more shady. The Eureka palm grows fine, but what I put underneath it Sun patience and the Vinca not going to do as well, so I just have to be like content that they're not going to match, just as what it is. It's it's fine. 
And I had picked up these Justicias here. That is not the right label for this. I'm gonna pull that out. Don't wanna confuse. Oh, I could just, just pretend that one wasn't there. We can do that too. This is the fruit cocktail Justicia. I had picked up two of these thinking that I would do uh, those in each one of these because as far as the sunshade goes, like those could end up going okay together. But still, I want to maintain that orange, pink, purple thing like I've been doing throughout the rest of the garden. So I was like, eh, I'll do something else with them. I'm thinking in this one, I'm probably going to do some of those upright fuchsias, the variegated, the fuchsia firecracker, and uh, I don't know, maybe a creeping Jenny over the front. I may end up even pulling that out and doing creeping Jenny, so at least the trailers coming over the front are the same. I don't know. I'm going to play around with it. But what I do know is that this vlog has gotten very, very long. I don't even know I'm going to title this thing. How do you... It's so long and I've done so many different things. It's certainly not going to be how to repot a Rika bombs because this is not typically how you would... If you're here thinking this is how you're supposed to repot a Rika bombs, no. It's, I only had to do things the way I did, the way I pulled them out. And I guess I didn't tell you guys this. I cut off like the base of the roots because they were wrapped around all the old drainage stuff. That's pretty much the only trimming I did on the roots. Palms typically are just fine with being root bound. So really when you're repotting your palms, if you're doing it like every other year or whenever they seem to get to a point where you can't really keep them hydrated, you want to do it before it gets to that point, obviously. Usually you can just lift them from their pot. You can run your hands around the root ball if you need to and plop them into a new pot like one to two inches bigger on the outside diameter of the pot. That's all you need to do. I only had to do things this way because I wanted to make sure there wasn't any soil that had compacted and turned into like a rotting clay in the center of the root balls, which there wasn't, but it was getting there. It would have eventually, so I'm glad that I did that and just, you know, got that done. Need to get it done. And I also realized that it's time for another garden tour. I can't believe it's already July, so I'm going to get on that. That'll probably be one of the next videos that comes out. Which is another reason I'm wrapping things up, because I have a lot to do before that garden tour, before I put that video out, and that'll all be in the next vlog. Been a few days, <laughs> you need to, let me come over here so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Been a few days with the peppers and everything, they're doing well. The jalapenos, some of them are ripening out red. I, you know, you can pick them when they're green, and that's fine, they're gonna be a little bit more hot. You wait till they're red, they're gonna be a little bit more sweet and slightly less heat to them. But otherwise, everything else is doing fine. The strawberries have perked up, and the peppers are perky and there's new growth already in here on the nodes of those scotch bonnets so it's going to be a very 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 spicy summer <laughs> maybe that's what i'll title the vlog planting spicy things i, I have no idea this thing right how you doing this thing cute right okay whatever but what is with this why does that need to be right on the i mean it's not like this is here purely for decorative purposes but that's so ugly. Couldn't they put that on the bottom? And most of it doesn't even make sense. Like, it's not stuff that I don't think... No protection against drowning. I mean, okay. So it's really just all things that they don't get sued, I suppose. But put it on the bottom, maybe? That would be nice. I don't know. On the box? Make it obvious somewhere? I don't know. I just think it's ugly. They don't need to do that. Of course, maybe they figure, like, <laughs> these fools are putting stingrays in their pool. Who cares if they look good? Flamingo's looking nice. <laughs> do a pool float tour. Uh, what I was getting ready to say is that I have the parts ordered so I can do two of the Pothos planters. So just need to wait for those to come in and I'll be able to do that. Hopefully in like a week or two, I'm thinking. Like I said, I'm going to go, hey, um, real quick, you guys, what is this? It was unlabeled. Ripple? Pucker? One of those, maybe? I'm not sure. I haven't really put in any effort trying to figure it out. Just figured y'all were smart. I can ask you and then I'll look it up. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, everything's just going beautifully for you. My social media is linked down below, down in the description of the video. I'm on Instagram, like, way more than anything else, that's probably the best way to get a hold of me. Other than the comment section here on YouTube, that is. And if you liked the video, could you give it a thumbs up, I appreciate it. And subscribe as well, and hit that notification bell, because I upload multiple times a week. That way you'll know new videos come out. Okay, that's gonna do it. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing.